Welcome to Find Truth 88. So in my last message, I was sharing with you about enduring the storm, weathering the storm. And to weather the storm, we don't wait until the storm comes and then try to get prepared. See, the time to get prepared for a storm is now. The time to get strong in the Lord and in the power of his might is now, is today. It's so easy to run around and go toward the path of least resistance. Go toward the teacher who doesn't challenge me in the faith. I think about when I was young in the faith, early in uh, our marriage, me and Esther, early in our marriage, how, you know, there was many troubles that we went through. You know, uh, Esther and I, we started, uh, I've said this before, we started in fornication 20 years ago. We're coming up on 20 years since now we first uh, uh, been together. We've been married for 18 years. And, you know, those first, uh, that first year and a half or two years, we were professing Christians, but we were not following Jesus. We were not living for the Lord. So, you know, in that time period, the Lord began to get our attention. The Lord began to put a hunger in our hearts. The Lord put a desire on my heart to seek him, not to uh, run after what was popular, but the Lord put a desire in my heart to find truth. And in doing so, I started seeking teachers who were bold and just spoke it like it was. See, I didn't want to like do what many do when they go to counseling. They, they go to counseling and then they never get better because that counselor just keeps dragging it out, dragging it out, dragging it out. No, I sought after straightforward teachers who were bold and got to the point. Here's what I see and here, here's what you need to change. And then I would go back and seek the word. I'd seek the scriptures. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Are we going uh, to spend the time? Are we going to take the time to seek him out, to hear his voice? Jesus said in John 10, 27, this is a verse you hear me quote quite often. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they follow me. They follow Jesus. Well, how do you know the voice of the Lord? Well, you spend time with God. You spend time in the secret place. You spend time in the prayer closet to get acquainted with his voice. And when the voice of another speaks, I don't care how charming they are, how cute they are, how great their personality is, how popular they are, and how many people are foaming at the mouth at their feet and sucking up to them or giving them money. You know, I like, I love to share the word of God free of charge. See, you know, in Timothy, it talks about, uh, uh, that it says that the love of money is the roots of all kinds of evil. But when you read the, uh, the, the verses uh, leading up to that verse, you get an understanding of what it's saying. Paul is talking about those who are using the gospel as a money-making opportunity. These preachers and teachers who use the gospel as a money-making uh, opportunity, as an excuse to beg for your money. Now, I'm not saying that all giving is bad, but what I'm saying is there's a ton of people out here, out and about, they're taking money and they're, they're and they, hey and they're not using it for the gospel. They're not using it to speak the truth. Much of that money is going to themselves. I like to say it like this. If you need money, then go get a job. It might be time for you to get up off your behind and go get a job. It's just that simple. But you know, the Lord put a desire on my heart to be real. Not not to see I you know, I don't get caught up with this selfie stick pers personality thing that's going on around. Everybody wants to be seen. 
YouTube has become like uh, another episode of Who's Got Talent or American Idol. Who's the funniest? Who's the, the cutest? Who's the, who can come up with the, you know, their little skits and everything else? Yeah, that may uh, get view counts. That may entertain, but Jesus didn't say. I like to, to say it like Brother Steve. I heard him say this one time, Brother Steve at RaptureWatch.net. I saw him put this on his Facebook post. He says that, that Jesus didn't uh, call us to entertain his sheep. Jesus called us to feed his sheep. And, you know, that is so true. Because that is a scripture. Jesus said to feed my sheep. And he did not say entertain my sheep. But we live in a day now where folks are, they're, they're focused on entertaining the flock. Entertain, entertain. Do you desire to know the Lord? I'm asking you this question point blank and straightforward. I thank God for the, the strong teachers who spoke it boldly and rebuked me and corrected me when I needed it. That they had the courage and the boldness to speak up and say, Marcus, you need to change. You know, of course, people always want to get defensive at first. And, you know, and I got defensive at first. But when I got home and the Holy Spirit starts speaking to me, see, there there were so many layers. And, and, of course, the Lord is still working on me today. But there were so many layers. The Lord says, you, you need to deal with this. You need to deal with that. You need to deal with this, this, that, this, and that. You need to be a better husband, Marcus. You need to watch your attitude. You need to, to be more kind to your wife. You need to not be afraid of the truth in your walk with me. You need not to be afraid of bold teachers because they are the ones who are going to speak truth and get you on the right path as you seek and follow me. See, some people, they are either all just... They, they run after the, the, the soft, soft messages. They're all soft or they're all strong. But the Lord, see, put me on a balanced walk. Are we going to desire that? Do we want to weather the storm? Well, to weather the storm, we must mature and grow up in the Lord. That we no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the sleet of men and their cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. That's Ephesians chapter 4. Today is the day to grow up in the truth. Today is the day to, to, to grow up to the point where you can go get your own food. You can go work for your own food. You're not constantly relying on someone else to teach you the scriptures, to teach you the truth. I want to take you to Psalms chapter 40. Reading this out of the Amplified Version. I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up out of a horrible pit, a pit of tumult and destruction, out of the miry clay, froth and slime, and set my feet up on a rock, steadying, steadying my steps, establishing my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see it and fear, revere and worship and put their trust and confidence, confident reliance in the Lord. Hello. I waited patiently first things first right i waited patiently for the lord now let me stop right there so many people today they're not patient they don't want to wait on the lord they don't want to seek the face face of the lord god almighty i want to take you to psalms uh 91 i'm going to read verse one but i encourage you to take time spend time with the lord read psalms 91 Meditate it. Ponder these verses. Reading this out of the King James Version, 
Nine, uh, Psalms 91, verse 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Where are you putting your trust? Are you putting your trust in teachers? Are you putting your trust in, in followings, in groups, in cliques? Are you afraid to spend time alone? See, many people, the reason why they don't want to spend time alone is because they don't want to look in the mirror. They don't want to take the time. They don't want to examine their, their, themselves to see that they're truly in the faith. You know, many have asked me, Marcus, why have you uh, slowed down in the recent years on videos, on, on teachings? Because more and more I do want to, one, take the time for myself uh, to, to examine myself, to, 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 to make sure I'm clearly hearing from the Lord. That's one. And step two is I don't want to constantly shower you with messages so you can have time to digest the messages that are being shared. It's okay to spend time with the Lord. It's okay to turn off the TV, to turn off the internet. It's okay to turn these, these devices off and look in the mirror and say, Lord, what do you want to change in me? Lord, am I being too aggressive? Lord, am I being too passive? Or Lord, did I hit that exactly where you wanted me to hit it? Yes, many people may have got offended, but is, is that what you wanted me to say? See, I ask those questions all the, all the time, and I have for years now. I take the time to hear from the Lord. I take the time to prepare, to prepare for the coming messages. And the Lord brings those coming messages to me months before I even begin to share them. So it's very, very important. And again, if we want to grow up in the Lord and mature, then we're not going to be out here making knee-jerk reactions. I can say the same thing as husbands. The way, what kind of husband are you? Are you a knee-jerk husband? What kind of father are you? What kind of mother are you? What kind of co-worker are you? What kind of boss are you? Are you a knee-jerk person who just react? Whatever your flesh tells you, you jump out and you just react. Or do you allow the Lord to direct you? Do you allow his Holy Spirit to lead and guide you? I want to take you to, uh, as I just closed uh, uh, the scriptures here, as I just closed the Bible, I just want to, got to open it back up now. I was actually pretty close to where I needed to be. Uh, I want to take you to Psalms 107. You know, uh, I think about uh, the, the troubles that uh, Esther and I went through in our marriage. We went through so many troubles. You know, and I, I got so, so many times I got advice from other people. You need to move on. You need to get a divorce and move on and find someone else. My own father, you just need to move on. You know, the first eight years of our marriage was extremely rocky because we both wanted to do things our own way. We didn't want to submit one to another in the fear of the Lord, as it says in Ephesians chapter five. We wanted to do things our own way. We didn't want to go to the scriptures and seek the Lord. And so that put me on a path where I got on my knees and, and sought after the Lord diligently for a long period of time, patiently. It took patience. This didn't happen over six months. This, this didn't happen over a year. This took patience. And again, are you patiently waiting on the Lord? Because if you do, if you allow the Lord to work in your life, as you are diligent uh, in seeking the Lord, he, see, he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. I, I, I gave the example in the last message of the woman uh, in, in Luke 18, how she continually went back to that unjust judge and she received uh, the answer that she sought after. How much more? See, this is what Jesus this is the point Jesus was making in Luke 18. How much more 
will our just Heavenly Father answer us? How much more will our just Heavenly Father avenge us of our adversary? Are you willing, let me ask this question again, are you willing to patiently wait on the Lord? Because let me tell you what impatience does. Impatience just, you know, in a week or two, we just run back out into the world. Impatience just runs to a teacher that tells us something we want to hear. Impatience uh, 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 gives us thin skin where we don't listen to bold preachers who are speaking truth. You know, the scripture tells us that the, that the righteous are as bold as a lion. Hello? The righteous are as... Really think about that verse. If you went into your backyard and there was a lion standing there, would you like just... Would you debate that lion? Would you argue with that lion why that lion is taking the position he's taking? Hello? Would, 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 would you haggle with that lion? Or would you say, okay, I respect that and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get out of your space. I'm going to get out of Dodge. The righteous are as bold. It didn't say that the righteous are timid and passive, passive and, and fearful. Actually, it says the opposite. The scripture says the opposite. It says that, that the Lord did not give us a spirit of timidity and fear. Are you afraid of teachers and preachers who, who rise up in a righteous anger from time to time? Well, you shouldn't be. See, this is the problem. What there, there's so many people on the internet. They never get angry. They never get loud. They never. They just. They're just calm and cool and cheesy and see. But this is the thing. They have no righteousness, because for an individual to rise up in a righteous anger, first you have to have righteousness. And the reason why many of these folks, they never rise up in a righteous anger because they're not even righteous to begin with. But yet they're popular and they have many, many people running and following after them because they themselves don't have the patience to seek the Lord's direction. It's easier just to turn on the internet and run after what's popular. It takes courage. I want you to hear this here. Before I move on to the next point, it takes courage to stand with the few. It takes courage to go up against the flow, to go against the flow. It takes courage to be the nail that sticks out. It takes courage to rock the boat. And today we're living in a day where folks simply don't, so many folks simply don't have courage. Psalms 107 and I'll begin to end the message with this. Psalms 107, verse 10, such as the King James Version here. I'd say I love the King James Version. I love the King James Version. I don't have anything against the King James. I study out of the King James regularly. I study out of the Amplified Version regularly. I study out of the New Living Translation regularly. I'm not going to sit here and tell you if you study out of the New Living and the Holy Spirit's moving in your life, and I'm not going to sit here and try to veto what the Holy Spirit's doing in your life. I know, see, I know individuals who are king, who, 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 who preference the King James Version only. I think about a brother who a couple of years back says, me and my family, we're, we're going to, uh, we're, we're traveling, we're going to be traveling back through Oklahoma City on the way home. I'd like to meet with you. Now, he had contacted me like several months before this, this trip that he was telling me about. And I was like, okay, but I was getting a green light from the Holy Spirit. Because I'm telling you right now, and I, I would say this to you right now, don't, don't give me any offers like this. Don't, don't ask to meet with me or anything, because more than likely, I'm going to tell you no. But this individual asked me, and, and, and I got the green light. It's, it's just, I, there was like, the Holy Spirit was saying, it's okay. And then I told my wife, uh, well, first, uh, he, he, you know, I, I said, probably he'll forget about it. And so, but about two months later, he contacted me and says, okay, we're, we're coming through on this date. And I was like, okay. So I said, yes. Told my wife and she was like, okay. 
That, that was actually her response. So she wasn't too thrilled about it. Anyway, uh, we meet at this restaurant that I chose. Uh, and in about 15 minutes, this conversation uh, started uh, occurring. And, and I tell you what, this, this dinner went on, this evening went on for about, I want to say, two hours to two and a half hours to the very close of the restaurant. I mean, time flew. We, 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 we just, we fellowshiped. It was godly. It was God ordained that we crossed paths. These individuals, and, and, and again, let me keep, let me make, make this statement again. This individual, he preferences the King James Version only. And he knows I teach out of other translations. But you know what? He has a love for Jesus Christ. He has a love for the truth. He has a love for the doctrine. See, so many people, they start bickerings and fights. See, I don't, I don't have any problems with individuals who are King James only. But what I do have a problem with is with the individual say, well, you're not in truth because you don't uh, read from the same translation as I do. You know, over the last couple of years, this couple, uh, I'll name their names, not their last names, but I will name their names, Lewis and Amanda, they have been so kind to me posting on uh, our ministry page, inviting us uh, to where they live out in, 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 in Houston, which the funny thing was the very first trip Esther and I ever took 20 years ago was to Houston, Texas. A city, a beautiful city out there. We, I remember a picture that I took of Esther out on in Galveston. Uh, I guess you would call it the piers. It's these big, gigantic uh, stone blocks that go out into the ocean. And see, uh, it's been 20 years, coming up on 20 years now, Esther and I, we're planning to go back out there. And I'm going to take that, I uh, plan to take that same shot out there again, if, uh, you know, weather permitting and everything else, Lord, Lord willing. But, you know, I, I guess the point uh, of what I'm saying is, is, is it was God ordained that we crossed paths. You know, the way they showed their kind, kindness to us, they paid for our meal show the love of Christ. And again, over the last couple of years, I've, I've, you know, uh, you know, it's like they show their kindness. See, that's rare today. You see people arguing and bickering and splitting hairs about the littlest of things. I know they, they don't agree with everything I say. You know, I think about Lewis and Carol. The teachers who I bring up every once in a while, uh, this was that marriage class that I went to for five years, and Esther, she went uh, also. But they uh, were not King James only, but there were certain things that they preached about that we didn't agree with, because when we looked in the scriptures, we didn't see that. Don't take that one or two things that you disagree with, unless some clown or joker is saying something that's totally, completely off. But I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to push someone out of my life because they don't study the same way I study. See, that's that's not scriptural to do that. I'm not going to, you know, uh, push people out of my life because they have a post-trip view of the of the of the rapture or the catching away, or vice versa. You know, see, I'm I'm pre-trip. I have a pre-trip view, but I'm not going to, uh, you know, alienate people and push people out of the way because they have a post-trip view. But at the same time, don't come to me. And rip me to shreds because my, I have a pre-trip view and you have a post-trip view. You see what I'm saying? And so you see people doing this with the King James debate. They're debating over the King James. Uh, there was one person uh, uh, five years ago. This angry man who came on the internet. A uh, uh, little man in a big truck. See, you know, and you, you see so many people with that, that attitude, that little man, but he literally, he was a little man in a big truck. And he's still today, he's on his King James rants, King James only. I like to say I'm King Jesus only. You go worship your King James and I'll go worship my King Jesus. You go worship your false gods and I'll worship the one and only true God. See, it's not about King James, it's about King Jesus. It's about being led of the Holy Spirit. It's about abiding in truth, in the doctrine. And I can't, I can't find one verse in the King James Version or any other version that says 
that we are only to study out of the King James Version. If you can find that for me, please let me know. But I don't I think you're gonna have a hard time finding it. Psalms 107, verse 20. Uh, by the way, to Lewis and your wife, I just want to thank you both. Because I want to let you know that your kindness and love of the Lord really do touch our heart. Esther and I, we really appreciate you so, so very much. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Psalms 107, verse 10, and I'll end the message with this. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought them down, he brought uh, down their heart with labor, and they fell down, and there was none to help. Thank God that that wasn't the end of the story. I think we've all been there. We've all blown off the counsel of, of the Almighty. We've all rejected His counsel at one time or another. But thank God that that's not the end of the story. Are you in a storm right now? Do you need the Lord's help? Are you seeking the Lord? Are you going through a trial? Let me encourage you in this. Verse 13, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of the darkness and the shadow of death, and broke their bands asunder. See, he broke that bondage. He broke it apart. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You know, I think about Matthew 14. You see that same pattern right there. See, Jesus sent the disciples. See, some storms we create, but you know, the Lord sent the disciples. They, they went through that storm because they were obeying the Lord. Jesus said, cross the sea. They did. They faced the storm. And then Jesus, see, they, they, they were towing and rowing in that storm all night long. And then Jesus shows up in the very latter part of the night, the fourth watch of the night, by walking on the sea. Peter said, Lord, if it's really you, allow me to come to you by walking on the sea. Come. He came, he started taking the steps on the water as he was focusing on Jesus, trusting Jesus. Then he allowed the winds and the waves, his perception of the winds and the waves to cause him to sink, get distracted. But then he cried out, Lord, save me. And, it, and the scripture said immediately, Jesus reached out and grabbed him. See, I see the same very pattern here in Psalms 107. Trust the Lord. Call out to the Lord. See, I'll make one more point here before I close. Peter could have stayed in the boat with the rest of the crowd. The rest of the disciples in the sea. They, why didn't all the disciples step out? No, Peter had a faith. Peter, Peter was not afraid to rock the boat or step out of the boat. Just because the crowd's not doing it, don't mean that you have to stay with them and, and be fools too. You step out, step out and, and seek Jesus. Even if you're the only one, even if you're the nail that's sticking out, step out. Even if you're going against the flow, step out and seek Jesus. Well, that's my message today. There's always hope. There's always, Jesus is the answer. Trust him. He will answer. Have patience, wait on the Lord, and watch this delivering hand move in your life. From Esther and I, we love you. Uh, Esther is going to be sharing a, a, a message with me here shortly, so be looking for that. But from us both, we love you, and may the grace, peace, and love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. God bless you. Good night.